Well, blessed Monday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. Now, I've been talking about how Revelation 20 is probably the most uh, contested part of the book of Revelation about whether there'll be a literal uh, thousand years or whether it's figurative of the whole church age where Satan is bound and then finally released. But this last section here of 20 and on into the end of it is once again a place where we achieve a really great consensus, um, regardless of your Christian point of view. Just like at the beginning, uh, Revelations chapters 1, 2, and 3 are almost consistently um, agreed upon, so are the final chapters, and it starts here at the second part of chapter 20, where we have a lot of agreement about what the end of the world is supposed to be like. And so I just wanted to highlight that because we've had um, some passages where, depending on your timeline, depending on your perspective, can come to many different conclusions. But here we have some solid things. And it starts with the judgment. The judgment not only of the devil, but of all of those who have disobeyed, but also our judgment. So, but they don't highlight our judgment, but and I'll talk about that in a little bit as we read in our passage here, Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15. Then I saw a white throne, and the one who sat on it, the earth and the heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. In other words, everything. There's no, no caves, no rocks everything will be exposed. And that's the name of the book, Apocalypse, the Revelation, the uh, Revealing of the Curtain. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. And no, it says the dead. It doesn't say the righteous and the unrighteous. There's not a separation here. It just says everyone will be judged. And that's the question we'll have to ask ourselves. What are you going to plead? What are we going to plead when we are before this judgment? Also, another book was opened, the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, as recorded in these books. Now, if we are being judged by our works, Here's the bad news that Christianity, or at least our interpretation of Christianity, presents. All of us are going to be found unrighteous, fakers, um, hypocrites, however you want to term it. We all will be found wanting. And according to my understanding, we'll be found in the book of judgment. But what are we to plead? We are to plead the righteousness of Jesus, the righteousness that has been gifted through Jesus. And so while we will be found in the book of judgment, we plead Jesus's work, Jesus's righteousness as our own, because Jesus allows us to do that. He has exchanged our righteousness for his. And so... While we will be found in the judgment book, we will also be found in the life book if we trust in his work, his work in our life. And so it says, also another book was opened, the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works as recorded in the books. And there's only one person that's found in the book of life, and that's where we claim ourselves. That's why we're baptized into Jesus. That's why we receive his body and blood as our own, because we claim him as our life. And the sea gave up their dead and were in it. Death and Hades gave up their dead that were in them, and all were judged according to what they had done. Now remember, Hades is a description of where the dead go, like Sheol, before there is a hell. And, of course, this is before heaven. So there's kind of a both and going on here. All of them are giving up those who are dead. Then death and Hades were thrown into 
the lake of fire, meaning their purpose now is done. Now it is up to being in the book of life or being in the book of judgment. But more importantly, we're all in the book of judgment, but we plead the gift that we have been given of the book of life. This is the second death, the lake of fire. In other words, what we want to avoid is not the first death. The first death we embrace. That's where we take up our cross and follow Jesus. It's the second death after resurrection, after judgment, that we plead to the Lord to avoid. And anyone whose name is not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. And so it is our prerogative to claim Jesus's death and resurrection, to claim Jesus's righteousness to claim Jesus's life. And so that is what is first described in this book. Now, I've often had a, a joke that I've liked to share. I'll share it again. You know you're having not just a bad day, but a bad eternity, is if you're standing in line on the book of this book of judgment, St. Peter, traditionally seen as the gatekeeper, and ahead of you is Mother Teresa. And Mother and, G and Peter says, well, I'll let you in, but Mother Teresa, you could have done a little bit more. And you're the next person. What are you going to plead? What am I going to plead? Because my righteousness probably doesn't exceed that of Mother Teresa's, at least in my mind. Maybe we've elevated it into an idol, which I think is probably true. Mother Teresa revealed in some of her private diaries, whether they should have been published or not, they have been revealed. And she struggled with sin, with not doing the will of God as much as any other person you could imagine. And I think that it showed a human side that we needed to see that even the greatest saints have a struggle that we just don't understand. I know I've talked about that. So some will just all of a sudden, when I go through a struggle, they'll say, I never thought pastors had to do that. And it's like, oh, yes. I never thought pastors, you know, experienced nitpicking and, and um, um, how should I say, uh, backstabbing and other things in the church. And it's like, I've experienced it all and more with a righteous smile. You know, all those things that happen in the world can happen in the greatest of our structures, in the greatest of people. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. And I'm actually, the thing I'm always amazed at is that the kingdom of God and God's work keeps on going in spite of us. That, I think, is the truest miracle. But remember this. This is the judgment of the world. And we need to be prepared for it to plead the blood of Jesus. That's why we talk about that being our righteous exchange, as Luther said. My rags for his righteousness. And that, my friends, is good news. So, even though this is the first part of the end, it is not the glorious part. We have Revelation 21 and 22. And that we will have a lot to talk about. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. We'll see you next time. Take care.